Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq right, Veteran 8888. Today we're going to be doing a video about UK gun laws. All right, and I figured no better person to do that than my pal Richard from the UK. Thank you. And uh, we're going to have him here to talk a little bit about some of the crap that, that is going on in the UK and kind of where it all started. Um, and you know, there's a lot of confusion. I mean, Americans especially, it's hard enough to get us, us folks in the U.S. to understand like what goes on with our laws yeah. because there's 50 states and there's all these different rules that each state has. Sure. And of course, some people don't even know like their representatives' phone numbers and things like that. So even in their own little world, they're, they're lost. So a lot of folks tend to not understand what's going on around the world around them. And people think that it's that it's really bad. And of course, I guess in some places it, it could be, perhaps. Um, but uh, it's funny, like you and I have talked a little bit about some of the UK gun laws, and I thought it would be fun to do a video on, on the kind of give the spill about what goes on in the UK. So tell us a little bit about how it all started. Like, at one point, the UK was not unlike here in terms of what civilians were able to have. Yeah, no, we, how, how did things change? Well, we had, a, we had carry laws similar to what you have in the US, but they were taken away several hundred years ago because we had a politician that was killed in the House of Parliament. And I only found this out recently because I knew we had a carry law and it was because a, a politician was killed in the House of Parliament. So they took away everybody's carry, right to carry like you have here. And that was several hundred years ago. And then, but since then, it's been quite straightforward until uh, World War II. There was a lot of like bringbacks from World War II. And then the control came in from like the late 40s and onwards and up until today, which at the moment it's fairly level, apart from like in Scotland, where they're bringing in licensing for air guns. Um, but in the, in the rest of the UK, like what we can have has stayed the same since the last uh, roughly 20 years since the handgun ban in the mainland of the UK. So, so that handgun ban is, is something that's post-World War II? Yeah, that, that, that was 20 years ago. Um, the centerfire ban on semi-auto centerfires was in the, uh, after 1987. Mm -hmm. in, in 1987, that came in. So anything that was centerfire, semi-auto was banned. So we're talking like a literal confiscation, like, yeah. hey, is a mandatory turn in? Yeah. Now, was it, is, I'm, I'm assuming it was a voluntary thing, like, hey, they didn't come door to door and take them. No, no, you had to line up at the police station and you handed them back. And the handguns, we were paid um, compensation for um, because I, I had to give up all mine. And, uh, and a lot of friends, like uh, military and police, they all had to give up theirs. I mean, the police, they... We have armed police, but they're, they're, I'm talking about the police's own personal firearms. So, so the policemen over there and all those guys are issued a, a pistol, obviously, yeah. and then if, when if, they go to work, they get their gun, yeah. and then when they leave, we they go back and put it in a yeah, locker we, or something we, like we that. We don't have every single policeman armed like you do here. We have like an armed response team. Okay. So if there's an incident, like a bank robbery, they will be called in. Every main city has at least So if you're, if you're drunk at a bar and acting like a doofus and... And and they have to they have to check you. They're just going to knock you over the head with a stick or something. Yeah, that's okay. it. Well, they they carry. <laughs> there's more officers with tasers, um, pepper spray. Uh, well, not uh, pepper spray as much. Less than lethal. Yeah, less than less than lethal response. Okay. Outstanding. So that so that's really one of those things that was, was full circle after World War II. There was hang, handgun turn-ins, semi-auto yeah, turn-ins. Well, yeah, after like 1987 was the semi-auto center fire ban. Okay. Twenty years ago was the handgun ban. And then since, since then, we can have like, um, like this revolver here. We can have this with a longer barrel out to about here because the barrel length has to be a minimum. Then we have a wire coming out of here with a counterweight on. That's, and we can, so to we make the have, overall length. Yeah, whether it's a 44 Magnum revolver, for, you can get them in 45 ACP. They do 9mm conversions. There's a lot of Taurus one sold in the UK and some so, so a little bit of a it's, of a workaround yeah. uh, because of the length restriction yeah, that, so basically you're taking a handgun and making and to, the length of a rifle ba yeah basically turn it into a, car, a carbine I got you okay yeah. so now you mentioned this whole straight pull thing so you can't have some autos but you can have a gun that's magazine fed yeah. and that is permanently modified to not shoot semi auto. Right, yeah. Say like with this SKS here. Okay. This is semi auto because it's in America. If this was in the UK it would have to be straight pull. So there was no gas system at all, but the rifle would look identical apart from how you use it. Now right. each time you pull it back, release, and that would load one round into the chamber from the magazine. You pull the trigger, when you're ready to fire, you pull the trigger, it would fire that one round. 
you pull that back, it would eject the case that's just been fired, you release, and it would load the next one. So basically, no gas system. No, no gas system so whatsoever. So that's why a lot of the folks tend to, like you guys, when y'all visit the U.S., you like to get a hold of these because yeah. I would imagine, correct me if I'm wrong, because of when these guns were turned in, there's probably not a lot of these in a straight pull configuration they're, because they're, they would have been turned in. As far as I know, they're older. As far as I know, there's no uh, straight pull SKSs in the so UK. So it would be a newly produced yeah, semi-auto that would be brought I mean, in. Or we whatever. can buy a brand new um, M1 Garand. We can buy a brand new M1 Carbine. Mm -hmm. We can buy a brand new FAL. Mm -hmm. um, there's uh, any AK-47 like caliber, uh, seven point. 6.2 by 39 and the 5.45. So they just have gas blocks that are just solid and no gas yeah, they're, blocks they're, they're, So they're made, made that way. The, bar the barrel, like on an M where you have the gas block on an M4, it just doesn't exist. Okay. So, okay. And then others, like the M4 with the charge handle at the rear, some people had problems because each time, obviously, you've got to use that. So That's they've done right. a modification on the side of I the M4, you. so it's yeah, like Yeah, yeah, like some of the side charge Yeah, options. so it's a side charge. Well, the same one as of the reasons that we wanted to make this video is one, to, to bring awareness to what the you know guys in the UK are going through. Like, you know, we, we care about their gun rights very, as, as well, you know, and, and, uh, and, and also as kind of an example to like let people know, like, we don't want this kind of thing to happen to us. And there's a lot of folks in the UK that care about the United States and, and they care about our rights just as much as we do and they hate to see it being sold up the river just like anybody else. You know, we had the NRA annual meeting recently, yep. which Richard attended, and did you have fun? Oh, yes. <laughs> Outstanding. So we had the NRA annual meeting in, uh, in Atlanta this year, and, um, you know, talking with the NRA, it was just an awesome opportunity to really know that they are on the offensive when it comes to restoring our rights and everything, and we wanted to make this video to talk about UK gun laws because I feel it's pretty important for people to see, you know, what can happen, and do you think that it was a... Do you think it was a knee-jerk reaction that the yeah. government had both, to what was going both on? Both times, when we've lost, especially with the 87 ban on the semi-autos, it was an overreaction because most of the people, the, it was after the Hungerford massacre. Mm -hmm. Now, my, that guy used a variety of weapons. Most of the people that were killed were killed with a Beretta 92 handgun, mm -hmm. uh, Beretta 92F, as far as I understand it. So it was an eject reaction because of the media, the same as what you had to hit here. After sure. every shooting, the media jump on it. And then, but the media, they don't look into all the gun laws we have because like though we can't have a semi-automatic center fire like this SKS, I can still own a working tank or a working artillery gun as long as I don't use high explosive ammunition. Right. I've got somewhere to use it like an old quarry. Sure. I can fire off solid slugs like you use in your cannon. Sure. Uh, you know, as, and, and as long as the tank doesn't obviously have an autoloader, which is on a modern tank or high explosive ammunition, I'm fine to use that large caliber weapon. I've noticed videos in the UK of guys riding around in tanks yeah. and ferrets and Saracens. Yeah, we, we have, all kind of we have a lot vehicles. of privately owned military vehicles. Um, and some of them have been demilled. Others you can own on a, basically, it's the same as a firearms license for a rifle, it's just for your tank the gun on your tank. Now you don't have to use that, it's just kept as living history, so it's sure. working. Other people- they, But it has to be registered or Yeah, or it's registered yeah, because yeah. it's work, a working gun. Right. Even if it's like a 105 or like a 77 millimeter. So even a, if you have no, no intention to ever shoot it, it still has yeah, to be- Yeah, it still has to be, because it's a working, uh, still a working firearm. Now in, in modern, you know, in the modern world in the UK, you know, we, we see a lot of stuff in the media that's going on over there, mm. attacks, knife attacks. Yep gun attacks even, so yeah. people are acquiring oh, firearms illegally. There's plenty of using. illegal firearms that come in all the time for like Eastern European, uh, Eastern European countries and uh, Russia. And so it's created a black market. For, yeah, there's for a big, items. there is a huge black market and that black market didn't exist as much as what it was when we owned what we we could go out and buy. Like, like right. this Glock 19, when we could go out and own these. Now, these are only banned in the mainland of the UK, which is England, Scotland, and Wales. Okay. If I go to another part of the UK, like the Falklands, or Gibraltar, or the Isle of Man, or the Channel Islands, or even Northern Ireland, with all the problems we've had with terrorism there, they never banned handguns. Mm. And then, I mean, I can still own this in the UK, in the mainland, but I'd have to get it's a, to have it's a very metal. special license to get one and they don't just hand them out to everybody. Right, right. It's a Section 5 license. So that would be like maybe you're shooting films or doing, doing yeah, no, productions? The, the all the film guns would be blank firing. Okay. Because they, they, there was a case of um, an idiot, he brought a lot of Mac-10s in 45, said they were for a James Bond film, took them home, 
and were converting them and sen- selling them to drug dealers. Right. And he was ended up got caught because he just basically got too greedy. And they've changed the law now that if you're buying them for a film studio, you have to prove that that you have to have some kind that of that film or is something. yeah definitely being made by that studio. You can't just walk in to the supplier and say you need 50 Mac 10s because yeah. of a secret James Bond film being. Yeah, made. here's the cash. Yeah, yeah I can't I can't tell you because it's the new James Bond film or the new Rambo film or whatever. Sure. You, you cannot just go and buy a blank firer gotcha. and, and convert it like you used to be able to. Well, we were talking earlier about suppressors. Yeah. So, um, you know, here suppressors are highly regulated. And the thing is, like in the U.S., you know, obviously with things like the Hearing Protection Act, which is still kind of in its growing pains and growing stages uh, as a piece of legislation, there's some things about it that need to be a little bit better written. But there's a strong chance that with the NRA being on the offensive now, us, the people being on the offensive now, that in the U.S., we'll be able to get suppressors off the registry. But we have an NFA registry in the United States that requires certain types of firearms and devices to be uh, registered, uh, basically. So we have uh, suppressors are on the registry, short-barreled rifles and short-barreled shotguns are on the registry. And of course, uh, a a rifle has to have a barrel, a minimum of 16 inches, a shotgun, 18 inches. So if I wanna cut down this 10 gauge back here, which I might end up doing, and I want to make like a little eight inch, uh, you know, stupid out of it, right? Yeah. I can do that. I just have to put in the appropriate paperwork, pay the tax on it, and I can lop the barrel off and have as short of a barrel as I want on a shotgun. Right. So it's not, see, there's a lot of misconception. It's not that you can't have it. It's just that the proper licensing has to be in place. Yeah. You have to register the item. Uh, either you're a manufacturer and you're making the gun as a manufacturer or you're an individual who's going to file a form and make uh, the given item. Uh, suppressors, you can't just go in the store and buy it and walk out with it that day, but in the UK... Yeah, in the UK, you, UK. you, you um, on your firearms license, you, you, you would say, like, you, when you start off with a firearms license in the UK, you end up with two safes, one for your firearms, one for your ammunition, and they have to be both in a separate room in your, in your property, and they can't be anywhere where an everyday visitor would come to your property. Like, they can't be next to your electric meter or... Near, in near your kitchen sink or somewhere where uh, someone that was visiting your house would that you didn't know would automatically see that right it has to think, be a room that's uh-huh. inaccessible yeah to a, lot, a lot of people use their bedrooms and mm-hmm. put them in wardrobe or up in the loft and that's perfectly okay it has now, to do, be, do they have to inspect your storage conditions yes when, when you apply for your license they will do a background check with your doctor to make sure that you're like not on any sort of psychotic um episode tablets or anything um along those similar lines to make sure that you're not trying to get guns just to execute yourself and, uh, and others. Right. And then they will obviously do a background check on your criminal past. And it depends, like speeding tickets and everything like that, no problem. I know in like Switzerland that people go on, a, uh, that's the best place to own guns in, in Europe. But in Switzerland, if some speeding tickets you get, they will take away your guns if you're an excessive speeder. Yeah, so they, in, they in, really are in, strict about it. Yeah, and uh, uh, other than that, Switzerland's relaxed. But in the UK, if you get a speeding ticket, they're not going to take your guns. They're only going to take your guns like violent crime, wife beating, uh, violent disorder. It's in, not in the unlike uh, the way it is here to some degree. That's it, yeah. um, you know, I don't want any of these backwards politicians getting any stupid ideas over here about any of this stuff because we're not going to have it here. But. Uh, I, can, I can see a little sense in some of that, uh, sure. you know, to some degree. Like, okay, here, for instance, um, uh, you have domestic, um, uh, basically what they call uh, domestic violence. Yeah, you, you, in the UK we call it like, like domestic abuse. Yeah, domestic abuse. Yeah. So here, domestic violence charge may not necessarily be a felony, no. but domestic violence is an example of uh, where you can lose your gun rights. And the messed up thing about it, there's been some fighting to kind of get some common sense stuff done with it yeah. because... The issue is, okay, say you're 19 years old. All right, well, in the United States, you can buy a long gun. I can go and buy this SKS or even this Tavor uh, at at 19 years old uh, in in just about any gun shop or whatever. So at 19 years old, say you get in an argument with your girlfriend, and you know how it is when you're a kid. You do stupid things and you say stupid things. And say your girlfriend, like, slaps you or hits you or something. Well, the police show up, and she's crying, and someone hit who? And, of course, the guy's going to do the... Oh well, don't I don't want my girlfriend going to jail. Take me to jail. I hit her, and he'll lie about it, not realizing that he's inadvertently lost his gun rights forever. 
I mean, there might be some ways to kind of get it expunged over time, but it's a huge headache for someone to lose their gun rights over maybe something that might have been innocent. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, you know, you have to look at it on a case-by-case -case scenario. Yeah, in, but, in the UK, it'd be looked at as case-by-case. -case. If it was like a first-time offence and there wasn't much violence involved, you've probably got a good chance of keeping your firearms. Sure. But majority of firearm owners, I don't know any that have ever got in a domestic dis disturbance because they know that there's a chance they lose sure. it. They're well-behaved. I mean, this oh, is yeah. a misconception in the media that we're all killers. We only want guns to kill and everything else. It's not, the, it's not true in, uh, in the case at all. Now, have but, you seen that with, um, with, the, uh, with, with the, the, the government there uh, in the UK? Yeah. Does it seem like they don't want anything to do with it either? Like, okay, the they, citizens are over it, and then maybe the government's like, yeah, maybe this is a dumb idea, like doing all this, yeah, all this. They, the government is, have do they just go through the numbers? Yeah, know? the government have realized like the handgun ban, in just banning handguns in, in, in England, Scotland, Wales, costs the UK taxpayer over 800 million English pounds a year in lost revenue that could be used for the hospitals, schools, the roads. Sure. And, and some politicians have said, no, we made a mistake because we... We crapped on a lot of people that were just honest taxpayers, earning a living. Like myself, I lost 12,000 English pounds a year, and I don't pay any tax on that. And that was 20 years ago, so 20 times 12,000. You, you know, anyone can do the maths. But like, getting back to the silencer, I mean, yes, absolutely. When, when you first apply for a license, you, there's different types of license. Like for a farmer, there's a shotgun license, and then but your, for your firearms license, you can own um, any like semi-automatic uh, shotgun or 22 caliber. Any, everything else has to be like the straight pull or the bolt action we've talked about. Now a suppressor, you would say to the police, I would like a suppressor. And they, they will ask you, well, what caliber do you want it for? Now, if you have two, say 22 rifles, you can buy one suppressor, you can use it on any of the two rifles you've brought. Sure. But if, if it's another caliber, like you've only got one 308 rifle, you would tell them this, I want it for my 308 bolt action or my 308, whatever. And they, they would say yes. Normally in the ca case of these days is a lot of gunshots are reported to the police because a lot of people in the UK don't realise their own gun laws. So they will hear a gunshot, it will automatically call the police. So the police now are more friendly to people owning suppressors because you're allowed noise to... Noise pollution. Yeah, noise pollution is the thing. And so they, they uh, have got less of a hard time trying to get a suppressor. And all we do then, once it's on your ticket, you walk into the shop, into the firearm store where, where, where they have the suppressor you want, you pay for it, or all we do is pay the 20% tax, which is VAT, which is on everything in the UK anyway, whatever you buy, and you walk straight out the door with it, and it's written on your license. So they treat it just like a firearm? And yeah, you don't have to wait six months like you do here, some, some, and some people waited longer. Nine months. ATF, yeah, nine <laughs> months. I've heard of people waiting over a year yeah. when it's busy. And we don't pay the like two hundred dollars extra tax. All we do is pay the twenty whatever the suppressor cost. It has twenty percent value added tax, which is the same as the sales tax would be in here in Georgia. Sure. And, and other parts of, of yeah, the yeah. And you know, it's it's funny you mention like uh, you know it being a notification. So basically, it's like you buy it and hey, I bought it and there yeah. it is. So here it's a little bit different. Here it's like all right, well, we're asking permission. And then we here. Here's our extortion money yeah, that's that we're it. giving you. Yeah, you there, know, and when you apply, <laughs> when you apply for the UK license, there's a license fee. They they once they they pass you. Pretty, some police forces are, are, are slow in the UK. Others are quite quick. Where I live, like uh, Dorset, is a very good area in the UK. The southwest is a very good area in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, near Bisley, where the big range is, that's a very good area. The UK, mm -hmm. Hampshire Police where I am at the moment is, can be slow. And that's, gotcha. that's because of the couple of big cities we have, uh, Portsmouth and Southampton. There's been minor problems. And it depends on also the chief of police in other, like uh, cer certain Northern parts of the UK can be, the chief of police can be a woman. She can be a bit anti-gun. So she- So just depending, she, it's just like here. Yeah, she, the, she de they delay it just to put you off a bit. Yeah, but, yeah. If, but if you're an honest, Law-abiding, tax-paying citizen, just be patient. Yep. And as long as you, do, when they come round to your house, they will ask you some questions. And you, you have to have the thing in the UK is you have to have somewhere to shoot. You can't just there's a collector's license that you can have, which you can collect firearms, but that doesn't uh, entitle you to shoot, uh, fire those 
You have to prove weapon. that you have a place yeah. to shoot. If you've got a place to shoot, like a, a farmer has given you permission to do some rat control, fox control. Maybe you own uh, a big piece of property. Yeah, other type something. of, yeah, you can buy, you can buy like 10 acres. I, I have a friend of mine now, he, he only has a small back garden of 100 feet. He's built his own personal indoor firing range. And he had a minimum requirement of the concrete had to be a certain thickness and everything. So after it's built, you say, hey, this is where I'm yeah. going to be shooting. And then, of yeah, course, you it. know, you have law enforcement come out yeah. and they inspect it. Now, it seems a little obtrusive to me. Like, the, it, I just wouldn't see that, pat, like, flying here in the United States. No. You know, and here in the U.S., I mean, a lot of people just shoot in their backyards and stuff. Yeah. And it's really one of those kind of things. It depends on the state and depends on where you are. And like you said, sometimes here you'll have areas where people are a little more anti-gun and they're going to you know, give you a little bit harder time about it. Or you might deal with a police force who, unfortunately, you're dealing with police that are a little bit anti-gun. Um, you know, like here in Georgia, for instance, as long as you're not shooting within 50 yards of a public roadway or 500 yards yeah. of another person's residence, there's really nothing anybody can do as long as you have a safe back. Yeah, there's, back there's, there's similar regardless law, of the amount yeah, of property. There's similar you have. laws to that regarding like uh, roads and everything on 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 your own. It's land. pretty common sense. But though, you you know. can build if you've got the room and the money to do it. You can build your own indoor range. Now that can be your own personal range. If you want to invite people and use it as a club. You would have to get insurance for them, sure. liability insurance for and them. You probably let them know what shoot. you're doing, so and, they, you know. Yeah, and then you can set it up as a little club. You can have air cadets there. You can run it as a little business, and you can do quite well out of it. And I'm sure some folks probably do that yeah, to some degree. They might have a little bit of property, maybe have an outdoor range or an indoor range yeah. or whatever. The, the, the friend of mine that's done it in in uh, Dorset, he is just using it as his own personal because he does a lot of research and development building silencers and, and different things. Sure. He uses it as his own personal use and also uh, select invite of private individuals. So to be clear, all right, so I, I'm, a, I'm Joe Blow, Mr. UK citizen. Mm -hmm. I go into a, a gun shop and let's say I've already had my storage conditions inspected. Yep, I've already gotten my license. Yep. The police knows what I'm doing. All right, so I go in the gun shop. All right, I want to buy this straight pool SKS with a whatever welded, whatever it has to be to be, let's just say it's a, it's an SKS yeah, it, that I can it, buy. It's UK legal. All right, so I want to go buy this. All right, I, I, I buy it. I, I pay them the money. The, the gun store notifies the police that yeah, I bought it, the, and then I notify the police that I well, bought it, and that's it. I go home with the, it. You notify the police that you've purchased that weapon. Right, it's a notification. Yeah. It's not like I have to go, hey, can I buy this? And then no. it's this three-week no. process. No, that's it. Right, right so what, there's no what, waiting period. You one, just buy one, it and Once the good. caliber of that weapon is approved on your license, you can buy, go and buy that caliber of weapon. Gotcha. All, all you do is you notify the police once you've brought the weapon, mm -hmm. and it's uh, like you, it's basically they want to know make and the serial number. And it sounds very draconian to me. Yeah, it, it can be, but. You know after a while they're like, in oh, another way, God, this again. If those weapons were stolen, whoever the police find with those weapons, because they're serial number to you, and you, even if I was married to my like wife, you cannot, give your guns to your wife uh, unless even if you live together and yeah all that. if you live together if you've got your own place to shoot or you go to a shooting range that's fine but you cannot just give your wife the gun in the morning to go off somewhere and come back in the evening so so yeah like you and i are friends and we live a mile down the road from each yeah. other and you've got your favorite hunting spot and you've always wanted to try out a shotgun that i own right i couldn't say hey want to yeah. borrow my shotgun for yeah. the afternoon you, you can't just give me that shotgun and Oh, you might get it back next week. If you came with me, I can use your shotgun, rifle, whatever, no problem at all. Yeah, it, it's a little bit of a gray area here. Um, yeah. Like a long gun, yeah. Like if, if Chad was like, hey, I've never shot a SKS. I want to I want to own one of these, but yeah. I don't know if I like it. I could say, yeah, borrow it for a month and go shoot it and see if yeah. you like it. Maybe you'll go buy one. Yeah. Now this, now without getting too far down the rabbit hole, because I don't want this video to be too long, you have trusts and things like that here. So like we have a family trust where NFA items will be put on a trust where multiple people can be in possession of the item. But, but just for an individual, like if you just do a Form 1, Form 4, or whatever, and get something like a suppressor transferred to you as an individual, that's how this is treated. Yeah. So you wouldn't be able to say, hey, uh, I, I noticed you're going hunting next week for hogs. Here, borrow my suppressor no, because, and go hunt. Because you can't do that because, because this is a controlled item. I can sell it. I can, once I can sell you... The Which is su dumb. suppressor or the rifle in a personal transaction. And we both notify the police. I notify them that it's off of my license, mm -hmm. so then I can go and buy something else of that caliber. And I can only imagine the headache yeah. that that has to cause them, because they're having to keep up with oh, all yeah. that. I mean, 
if they don't keep up with that stuff to a T, mm. then then what is the point of even having yeah. it? And I guarantee you, and I'm, I'm not trying to you know be a, accuse them of anything, but I guarantee you that that there's certain things that they've lost track of, and oh, yes. certain information that's wrong, yeah. certain stuff that doesn't get updated properly. So there's probably all these holes in the system that are there just due to the very obtrusive and pain in the butt nature yeah. to even enforce I mean, this. The old the old forms were very easy to fill out. It was just make, serial number and caliber, mm -hmm. your name and address, your firearms certificate number, and you and you sent it off. Now sure. they're moving to a more online based system. It's supposed to speed things up in the future. That'll get screwed for up both, too. <laughs> both the owners, <laughs> the buyer and, and themselves. But there has been a, a very in some parts of the UK there's been a lot of delays and a lot of delays in like renewal because your firearms license has to be renewed every five years. Mm -hmm. So basically, on your old license, where it was handwritten in by the shop, when you get that license back, when you renew it after five years, mm -hmm. all that handwritten information will then be printed on your license. Okay, and you can like so then it, it, you it, can bounce it, that against your actual guns, and then if yeah, there's a mistake yeah. or an issue, then yep. you can kind of clear that up. But like like I say, like with the with the police knowing what firearms you own, that has been used for the benefit of the country in the past as well. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's like when the Falklands War was on, when they didn't have enough rifles and magazines for the troops to go down to the Falklands, they tracked down, they used the firearms register to track down extra rifles that they needed, especially uh, dial carbines and uh, magazines that they went round to owners' properties and asked, can we borrow, m most of the time, can we buy that, that weapon because we need it for this operation? Well, so it that, has, that's cool. It has to been, some degree. To a degree, out, it yeah. has been. And if the police came to me and said, they, w they will offer you a very good price if that had to happen. Sure. So if, if they had to take my personal firearm to somewhere like the Falklands to defend people of the UK or people of the, an ally like yourself of the US, I'd be very proud that my rifle went and did that job. I probably, I will never see that rifle again because it would probably be lost in combat or something. But they, they, they would buy it off you for a very good price. Like a lot of the handguns that were handed in, some people did well out of it when they, they were compensated. Yeah, and then and not only that, but then I imagine there's probably a lot of people that didn't turn them in at all. Yeah, well, if you had a license, they, they would know you had them. So they could right. track them down if you didn't bother to turn up. Sure. You had plenty. You had plenty of time to. So keep. basic, basically, kind of, you know, they 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 knew you had them, and they were just yeah. going to let you come. To the the, the thing is, it's frustrating well, because when the ban came in, and we all gave up our handguns in the mainland of the UK, it's frustrating to find out years afterwards that the ban wasn't even in all of the UK. So that it didn't make any sense to just say like England, England, Scotland, Wales, you can't have a handgun. Mm -hmm. But if I go twenty miles over to the Channel Islands or I travel to the Isle of Man or somewhere, or I go over to the Falklands, oh, you can own, a, you can own a, the latest Glock 19, the latest Glock 17, whatever you want to buy. You were mentioning um, kind of the, the futility of a registry, and, and mm. it is a very futile effort in many cases. You notice the, the amount, you're saying like 800,000 pounds or... Yeah, or 800, 800 million... 800 million. million. So in tax was all of lost. that money that, that it's costing them, yeah. you also notice that like uh, Canada did away with their long gun registry. Mm. Uh, you know, they were trying to roll out this long gun registry and a lot of people were mad about yeah. that. And then finally they realized like, holy crap, this is costing us a lot of money yeah. and it's not doing anything to no, fight crime it, it didn't or do terrorism. Any good at all. And and then they just they went did away with it. So yeah. that was a big victory for Canada. Um, so the point of this video, we really just wanted to we wanted to, to, to give you guys a glimpse of, of how bad it can be. Uh, you know, now granted, you know, a, a diluted right is still a right that's denied of you, you know, and th the thing is, we, we don't want that kind of thing to happen here. We have to stay on these politicians. We have to, you know, make sure we're writing and calling all of our representatives. We're helping out organizations like the NRA. And then ultimately, I think the goal of the NRA, you know, years and years and years from now should also be fighting these worldwide tyrannies uh, where our brothers over in the UK, our brothers and sisters in France, uh, Australia, yep. Canada, all of these places that have these really bum gun laws trying to fight and put awareness out that gun owners are just normal people like anybody else. Doesn't matter if you're across the pond, if you're up north up there in Kanukistan up there, our, our buddies up north, or if you're one of our, our crazy blimey people down in, uh, in, in Australia. I think what, what the world is seeing and, and what I, I want to put out there and the reason I want to make this video 
and of course there's a lot of things that we could discuss about it yep, but sure. the thing is is that a lot of us folks are cut from the same cloth you notice in the pro 2a community here in the u.s if somebody comes over from bulgaria or france or germany or the uk or all the way from Italy, like Instructor Zero, yeah. you know, or some of our Canadian friends or Australian friends, or if, I, if I'm leaving you out, I'm sorry, but you know if you're one of those people that's cut from the same cloth as, you know, gun owners around the world are some of the most awesome people that you'll ever run into, and it's just crazy how we can get together and we can nerd out and we can talk and we can talk guns, and it's just like we live down the road from each other. Yeah, so sure. in this digital age that we live in, we're finding that with the transfer of information and the free, free availability of information, that people are becoming closer. It doesn't matter that Richard lives in the UK. He and I can be friends and talk on the phone or chat or do what we're gonna do or share pictures on our cell phone or talk about the coolest gun that we'd like to have you know, coming up. So, so technology is closing the gap and closing the, 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 the physical like space gap between people and bringing people in closer. And I think that in coming years, we'd really like to see the world, not only the US, but the world adopting uh, you know, free firearms ownership for all honest people and having, uh, you know, everybody on the same page, not only with their rights, but, you know, I think that owning guns it could even be uh, argued as a fundamental human right, yeah, it's, uh, you it's know, just, to be able to protect at, at, yourself. At the end of the day, it's just the same as someone that plays golf. People like firearms, people like to shoot. You know, in some cases, yes, you need to, that firearm to defend yourself sure. or, to, to, or to defend your country. But right. a lot of people just like to go out and shoot. You know, what, what you said about, you know, the, the government asking you, hey, we need this gun for potential mm -hmm. service members and stuff, that strikes a nerve with me because the, there are a lot of guns in the U.S. Now, granted, like, you know, our military, like, they stockpile guns like they're going out of style, um, and I doubt that'd ever be a problem here, but, uh, you know, with the way that our rights are and, and we, the people, and the way that we are as people here in the U.S., if our government asked us, Physically, like, hey, uh, we're being invaded. You know, that's why yeah. we have well, this guns. Is, this we is, have guns so that uh, I don't want to hand this gun to somebody. I want to pick it up and go help them. Yeah. So we are empowered in that way. You know, that's why we have an ability to raise and keep a militia. Now, in, in these days with uh, the Second Amendment, you know, the, the, the right of the people to keep and bear arms to not be infringed, yeah. uh, and, and, uh, and realizing the importance of a militia, sure. it's not quite... It's black and white in terms of what a militia is. No. It's not, yeah, there's not like guys marching around in uniforms, but I think what, what is implied by that is you and your brothers and all the people around you knowing how to use your guns, being organized, and being able to, to make a difference in community and make a difference. I mean, a militia could be simply that, just, yeah. just like-minded men That's it. who are on the same page and want to help and are just are good men who can just be a force multiplier for the military and police that are out there. Yeah, there's been plenty of cases like, uh, there's a case recently in Arizona where a policeman stopped a traffic accident in Arizona on Highway 17 and was attacked by the people that he thought he was trying to help. Sure. He was shot himself, a passerby stopped, he saved that policeman's life. And people like that should be more in the news rather than the media just jumping on the tragedy of like the latest, like I what, agree. what can sell the most newspapers? What can what can we talk about the most BS? On or, the news? or what can scare people the most yeah. into wanting to give up their rights? And uh, you know, I, I strongly believe that good people everywhere that own guns, whether they're in all parts of the world, whether they're here in the U.S., uh, folks that own guns. I mean, we're all good people. If if you yeah. just talk to any t pro two A guy or pro gun guy, no matter where he's from you're gonna find that we're all cut from a very similar cloth. We're all really humble, good people. Uh, you're very rarely gonna run into a bad apple. No. So I think that as the world starts to see that more, maybe that we'll, we'll see a bit of a, of a renaissance, so to speak, in gun sure. ownership around yeah. the world. And maybe the p folks in the UK, uh, their, uh, their lawmakers and, and politicians will maybe get a little bit different of a mindset yeah. and, and realize, hey, you know, we do need to have gun laws sure. very much like the US again, which they once had yep. to some degree. And then eventually that whole thing kind of takes seed and spreads. I mean, that, that's really what our country was, was built around, in my opinion, sure. is, is taking that, that idea of freedom and, and loving it and embracing it so much that you want to give it to other people and, and let them have the freedoms you have. And yeah. I, I would like to see that uh, you know, everywhere. And without making this video political or anything, it's no. just that's, that's where I, I see you guys yeah. moving forward in the UK is is being back to the good old days in that perspective. Well, th this has been my fourth NRA show. 
And every single one I've been to, there has not been one incident of a crime in the show or outside, we, involving a firearm, it, either in the show or outside of the show with people that are coming here to visit. And this show recently, I'm sure it, they released the figures of something like 80, over 81,000 people came mm -hmm. to, to Atlanta and for the hurt. NRA show. <laughs> and you had open carry, concealed carry in the show. You've got hundreds of thousands of guns and weapons, knives. The president. Yeah, and the president <laughs> and his sons in the show. And yet not one person was either stabbed, shot, murdered, whatever. There's a common mutual respect yeah. and a mutual bond that develops from folks that love guns. And it, it, it's, yeah, like you mentioned golfers, you know, yeah, I mean, you, you, you and your buddies like to play golf, that's one thing, mm -hmm. but there's something about guns that brings people closer, in my opinion. Yeah. It's, it's very, sometimes even hard to explain for me, but I feel that people in the 2A community are very tight-knit folks sure. and, uh, and really love to spread that idea out to other folks. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed yourself in Atlanta. I did. And I really appreciate you coming to talk yep. to us. I know that there, in terms of the different licenses and stuff that are in the UK and some of the little small intricacies about what to do, what not to do, and what you can and can't do, or should and should not do, I know we could probably make this video hours oh, long yeah, sure. if we really I wanted mean, there, to. I mean, there's some things that are like the suppressors, the magazines, like not here in Georgia, but other parts of the US where you're limited to 10 rounds. We don't have any magazine so restrictions. So no magazine restrictions? We can have a 50 round drum on our straight pull AK. But it's we can have a 50 pull. round, yeah, we can have a 50 round on our 1022 semi-automatic because they're, they're all okay. So small bore guns, you can have a semi like a, yeah, a like 22. Yeah, any uh, like 22 caliber, like long rifle, short rifle, mm -hmm. um, you, you can have semi-automatic. Yep. Yeah. So, so to some degree, I mean, like the ease of getting suppressors is is yeah, not quite it, so bad. No, so. It, it's easier to get suppressors. It's it yep. depending on where you live here. Like I view, if I had a choice tomorrow to live in California or the UK and keep my guns that I have in the UK and firearms, I would stay in the UK. There is mm. no way I would move to California. So, see, in some ways, we are we are worse off literally yeah. than it than just you guys. it just depends. Like, and like the ones in like Connecticut, where you you, you had recent the hand in the order panic. And everything. I, I would rather stay in the UK. But if we're I, fighting it tooth and nail. Yeah. But if I could, really if are. I could move to Georgia or Arizona, Nevada, Florida, I've got no problem. You know, I would be on on the plane tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's it's one of those things. You know, you bring up a very valid point that you know, just at the federal level, just because the fight is is I, I don't want to say it's over, but just because we won a, a little minor skirmish of the entire war, it doesn't mean we've won the war. I mean, yeah. You know, we, we're looking good on the federal level. We've got a program president. Yeah. We've got, you know, uh, a, a relatively conservative and Republican-controlled House and Senate. Uh, you know, we're not looking too terrible, but that fight is still existing for some of sure. these states at the state level who are dealing with some really crummy laws. You mentioned Connecticut. I mean, obviously, there's a ton of stuff going on. Other things that Chad and I are going to hit on in some in videos coming up and gun gripes here. But, um, you know, it's that's the next fight for us is yeah. to get... States like California, New York, all these folks that are suffering and hurting and their rights are being deprived of them. Yeah. I mean, what part of infringe do people not yeah, understand? It. It's very, very clear. Sure. And, it's, and, and it's a simply written thing. And in your second amendment, <laughs> when it says like well regulated, to me in the modern age, well regulated means like no, like, um, shall we say, rapists, pedophiles, that type of thing. Sure. That would cause problems with firearms. I, if you can, could, keep, if you can keep those people out of it, to me, in this modern age that we are in 2017, to me, a well, well regulated means exactly. I, I would exactly. say that there that there's a very defined and and logical and simple explanation yeah. for it all. I mean, good people, which is most of us, okay, most yeah, of us are pretty it. good people. Most people can pretty much. Uh, figure out in their minds what is sure. right and wrong. Okay, yeah, yeah. you you know when it's wrong and you know when yep. it's right. That's it. And where where that where that fine line is is questionable. Yeah. It, and it is a slippery slope because yeah. your rights are your rights. But uh, if a person is is born with some uh, issue or or whatever, I mean, is that to say that they that they don't have a right to own a gun? It's it is a slippery slope, yeah. uh, and, and it is questionable. And I don't know the answer to that question. No, but I, I, I think that people just need to be vigilant and need to sure. be respectful of each other and the bad folks will get dealt with and the good folks will do the dealing. Yeah. And I think that until that that in, that intricate and intimate thing happens sure. in that little instance and we move on with life, uh, we, we can't rightly throw everyone under the bus. But yeah, you're, and you're right not to give up 
just because you think like Trump's been elected, everything's safe, the HP uh, Hearing Protection Act might be passed, so they're going to be okay. It's not a definite thing; it will be passed. It might not be, but don't don't give up just because you think Trump is pro-gun. Because right. like the 1987 ban, and that was under Margaret Thatcher's government, and she was more pro-gun than any prime minister we've had recently. I know. In the last 20, 30 years, she was more pro-gun for for the both the military and the civilians to be armed. And yet the 87 shooting happened in Hungerford and we lost the semi-automatics. Then they start to erode everything else. It's slowly taken away. That's and right. it's like the, the air gunners now in Scotland are moaning because the Scottish have their own parliament. They voted, oh, you ha have to have a license now just for an air rifle. Yeah, well, they and, realize and, that a lot of air rifles are getting kind of powerful. Yeah, and they're screaming and shouting. But the thing is, where were the air gunners when they took my handguns? You know, we, you need to stick together. You can't just say, oh, I'm a clay pigeon shooter or I'm a pheasant shooter. I've got my shotgun. I'm safe. That's I, right. I don't need to worry about ARs and handguns. You, all of, uh, the whole community needs to stick together. You know, it's really refreshing to hear you make that statement because that is exactly the kind of thinking we need here in the U.S. Like, we have a problem from within. Yeah. We are divided on a regular basis because people go, oh, well, I just own a double barrel shotgun yeah, that's it. and yeah. all I'm going to go is do out and, and you know shoot some ducks or something yeah. and oh you don't need that AR-15. No. That's completely false. And, and, when, mean, and when they start moaning about people like dressed in camouflage, the most people that are dressed in camouflage are the duck hunters or, yeah. or, or the fox control, the coyote control. Yeah, so it's urban not just, foxes. Not just oh someone dressed in camouflage they must be a murderer. They're just a normal hunter. Exactly. But then when they start to ban this, that, and everything else, eventually they all come to those duck hunters. Well, you know, the issue, exactly, it, you are exactly right. I mean, here in, in the U.S., you know, with what we're dealing with, if they were going to try to do some law where they're going to try to limit the amount of, of duck hunting uh, lands that mm. people have available for duck hunting in a public uh, yeah. an arena, or, or oh, they're going to try to ban some type of certain gun or ammunition related to even something as simple as duck hunting, yeah. which they wouldn't. But let's just no, say they did. Just, Do you not think that we would come out of the woodwork to defend those it. folks? Yeah. Because they are cut from the same cloth. Yeah. Everybody. And that needs to go both ways. I mean, sure. th those duck hunters and those old dudes smoking cigars at NRA, yeah. you know, they need to realize that, that the 2A is the 2A and you have to back the whole thing. You don't get to take just a little sample of the pie. Like everyone, we are all in this together and the ship's going down together or it's going to float together. You know, it, it, you know, sure. a part of the ship isn't just going to fall off and sink. It's going to be the whole thing or nothing. Yeah. So I think that we are seeing a change in uh, the policies and stuff and where the NRA's position is on the whole thing. So maybe in time, you know, it might take time, which time does heal a lot of wounds. Um, but in time, you know, maybe we'll see some change. Yeah, so sure. all, that's all we can hope. Yeah. Richard, thanks for hanging out. That's right. Thank you very much. Outstanding. Well, uh, Maybe next time you're you're down yep, and sure. we can get in another video and sure. maybe we'll be having a very different conversation. Yeah, hopefully more positive. Hopefully the Hearing Her 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 Protection Act will be passed for all of you. Yeah, and, we'll you see. and you'll see how wonderful it is to own a suppressor like we do in the UK with no problems. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And all you do, you pay the sales tax. And, and once the government see that they can generate more sales tax, they will be happy. Oh, well, this wasn't such It'll a bad thing. It'll be a no-brainer at that yeah. point. Won't this it? wasn't such a bad thing. Yeah, all, all things take a little you're, time. You're generating more jobs. You, you generate more tax revenue. There's more people in work. And there's more happy people. And there's more money being spent in the economy That's when, right. when you have... I think all of those things, things are a little more important than just a little bit of uh, arm-turning regulation sure. and extortion money. Yeah. So, hey, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this type of video, maybe you want to see a video like this with folks from other places like maybe France or Australia. I've got some Australian friends that have, have offered the uh, you know uh, opportunity to come out and, and do a video just like this. So if you like this idea, let me know uh, and we'll, we'll definitely do it. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Richard, thank you for being thank here. You. And uh, you know, God save the queen, right? <laughs> yeah, thank you, no. <laughs> Absolutely. One day. <laughs> Guys, thank you very much. Have a good day.